Welcome to the Health KPI podcast. This is episode 38, where we are going to dive into the primary KPI, the indicator that you should be tracking in order to be able to excel under pressure, in order to be able to, be able to handle more stressors thrown at you during your day. And that is through tracking your HRV. And that is what we are going to be diving into today. The HRV is the first metric. It is, it is the number one. As soon as I see that somebody that any of my clients has a health tracker, I'm like, ooh, does it track your HRV? Does it track your sleeping HRV? And if it does, I start teaching them right away all about HRV and how to understand how to um, understand the, the data that your HRV is giving them so that they start learning what is and isn't working for them in order to manage stressors. And we start working on getting your HRV up, increased to a higher HRV number, because the higher your HRV is, the more tolerance you have to stress. Your HRV is like a, kind of think of it like an elastic in a sense. And it has, it, 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 it's your elasticity to be able to handle stress. So you want it to be able to come back in where you can handle like really tight tension or sorry, be able to pull it really, really tight and it not break and have that tension there. And you want your, your tolerance to, um, be able to calm and be relaxed and where there's no tension on that elastic as well. That's what your HRV is. Essentially what it is, or what it is, is your heart rate variability. You know about your heart rate. Your heart rate is the number of times that your heart beats in a minute. Now your heart rate variability is the time in between heartbeats. So your heart rate should go up when you're running, when you're pushing yourself, when you're taxing yourself, um, when you're doing anything that is really pushing your body, your heart rate should go up. And when you're relaxed, it should slow down. But how much does it slow down? And we want it to get to where when you are relaxed, when you are calm, that your heart rate, that variability, that time in between beats is long. And the longer that that time is in between beats, the more tolerance you have to stress. Your ability to handle stressors, to, to stay calm, to focus on things, the better your focus is, the better your brain can think, the better you can problem solve. Your tolerance to anything that is happening in your day goes up. And what you will start noticing is that when you learn about HRV, when you start tracking it, when you have a low HRV, you'll find that those are the days that things bother you at work. Or if your HRV is consistently lower than it used to be, you might start not even finding joy in your job anymore. Things might frustrate you more at the job. There might be things that never used to bother you, start bothering you. You may find that when you are not at that point, but you're at a point where there's some things that are stressing you out more than others, your HRV is lower on some days, such as you did go out and party a little harder, have a few too many drinks the night before, you stayed up really, really late, or you were traveling and you're in a different time zone and you're adjusting to a new time zone. These things will affect your HRV, your ability to handle stressors. And you'll find the next day that you're more foggy. You're maybe more short with your kids. You're um, not able to even sit and focus on certain things without your mind wandering, or you have to read paragraphs numerous times. This is where we know that your ability to tolerate things, to manage things, to problem solve, um, it, it really does affect it. That you know, if you're waking up and your HRV is low, you're like, ooh, you know, I'm going to have to watch what I say in the office sometimes or watch things around my spouse sometimes because you know that you are, are probably going to be shorter than you would be on other things. Interestingly as well, with your HRV, in my past of working with first responders, my experience with them, 
is whenever any of them come to me with a low HRV and they are struggling to make it through their PTSD treatments. If they are in PTSD treatments or they are in therapy treatments and they are struggling to make it through, especially things like EMDR therapy. Um, there are studies that show it. There's an actual book that I have on that, I believe, this one here. Um, if you're watching, I have screens that I'm going through for this podcast. So there's a book called Heart Rate Variability, Using Biometrics to Improve Outcomes in Trauma-Informed Organizations. And it's all about therapy and social work on and how when you are able to increase somebody's HRV, they are able to better make it through their day to make it through therapies and treatments. And I've seen this hands-on with first responders that I've worked with who struggle to make it through their therapies and treatments, that once we were able to increase their HRV, to increase their tolerance to stressors, to be able to problem solve, to be able to think a bit more, to be able to process things, um, things weren't getting on their nerves, like the small things, then they were able to handle the big things in their therapies and in their treatments. So it is, is really important to, to understand that the HRV absolutely affects everything in your day. And our goal, this is why it is so important when I track it with clients, is for us to be increasing your HRV. So if we're doing something that is actually decreasing your HRV, such as, um, I know some certain supplements for me, decreases my HRV. It's actually um, where... There are certain supplements that people say, oh, they're supposed to help you, but certain dosages, if it's too high or too low, it may not increase my HRV. Or if I do too high of a dose, it may actually um, negatively affect my HRV and put me into a more stressed state. So really understanding uh, your HRV helps you to know as well what is and isn't working for you. And anytime that you are trying something new, if once you implement it, if your HRV starts going up, then you know you're on the right track. Um, so it's it's really super helpful in everything that I do with clients. Um, your HRV, people ask me, what is an ideal HRV? Now, this is where it's hard, is it varies so much from person to person. Your genetics can play a part in 47 to 64% into where your HRV lies. So you may be an athlete, let's just use an athlete because that's an easy, easy example. Let's say that, and I'm thinking of swimming just because we were just watching the, uh, the um, swimming championships on, on TV. So let's take all of them. Let's take these top eight, the ones that made it right to the finals in their race. They are around the same age. They're around the same training schedules. Their times and everything are about the same. But if we start looking at their HRVs, they will vary um, because it is such an individual basis. So don't compare yours to from one person to another. Um, I'm 49. So I know like for a 50-year-old average, it's anywhere between like 35 to 40 at the lowest. Um, up to about 60 is where you'd want to be. I do have a chart that I'm looking at on my screen right now. So if you're watching the video of this on YouTube, you can see that chart. And it, oh, I can put actually the slide deck. I'll put the link to the slide deck as well um, in the show notes for you. So if you are trying to track it, don't compare yourself with somebody else's. As well, it depends on what device you're using. I use two devices. I use um, an Aura Ring and a Whoop Band. And I will tell you that consistently my Aura, they're very consistent when my HRV increases, they raise on both. But my Aura Ring is usually 15 um, uh, marks lower. Uh, it's milliseconds. Uh, it's usually six, about 
15 to 16 milliseconds less than my whoop. My whoop is always, always higher than my aura, but they're consistent with one another. So it depends on the device that you're using as well. So there is a difference between your sleeping and your waking HRV. So if we think about this, it is the time in between your heartbeats. And when you are awake, there's so much happening. There's emails coming in. Your There might be different temperatures happening. Your different activities. You might be in an environment that is stressful for you. You might be in an environment that's relaxing for you, but it switches all throughout the day. You're physically exerting yourself differently. You might be eating spicy food. You might be eating a food that is not agreeing with your body at the moment. Um, you might have a cold or a flu or a fever or allergies. All of these things affect your waking HRV. So that is never going to be a consistent marker. It might be if you're tracking your HRV when you're working out or you want to make sure something like your HRV going into a therapy session, they may check what your HRV go is going into a therapy session to make sure that you do have the bandwidth for the therapy as I spoke about earlier. So it's okay to check your HRV during the day but just know that it is going to fluctuate like crazy. But knowing where your normals kind of lie during your day um, is a good indicator when you're doing something like, say you do have a big creative project or you're, you're doing a deal and you're like, oh crap, my HRV is really low. Then you can pull out some of your tools to be able to help calm your system and increase that time in between your heartbeats during the day. Now your sleeping HRV, that's where I love to dive into. Um, your sleeping HRV is consistent. Usually you're in the same bed, usually the same temperature, usually um, the same lights, like more and more is consistent in your night. So comparing one night to another in your HRV is super helpful for really finding a lot of your baselines and where you're at. For females, you will find that during your cycle, your HRV will change, especially as you're going through perimenopause, as I am right now. Um, like I can see exactly when I'm having hot flashes um, in the night, in my sleep, you can see those spikes on in my WHOOP data. Um, and that increases your HRV because your heart rate's gone up. So you will find... And, and just knowing that as well, though, is knowing that when I was getting those flashes, I was able to then implement tools to start decreasing my flashes and to stabilize my hormones more. So it's a great indicator for things that are going on that you can be working on. Um, but that waking HRV is very imperative because it helps you know if your body repaired while you were sleeping, if it healed and repaired enough so that you know how much you can push it or how much tolerance to stress you do have the next day. Um, with your HRV as well, like knowing, like, it, let's say you do have a project to do the next day, or you have a big assignment coming up, you'll know, okay, I've, as you're learning about your HRV, you're learning what tools increase your HRV, your tolerance to stress, your ability to problem solve and big picture think then you know to start pulling out all of those tools right before that big deal is going through, right before you have that big event. And so that you are ready and have the most brain and body bandwidth for that deal that's going through. I mean, for, for some of you in business, this could be the difference between like hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars on the table. And making sure that your HRV is up is, is paramount to you doing your best in that ability with projects that are going on. If these are like big projects, making sure your HRV is up so that you have the most focus, the least amount of mistakes. Um, with the first responder world, this is when your HRV is low, that is where ethical mistakes can happen. Short fuses can happen. Um, that is where struggling to make it through shift um, and make quick decision calls comes into play. So you, we want to make sure that for all of these situations, being a parent at home, being a great spouse, being a great leader, the higher your HRV is, your sleeping HRV, um, the better that 
you will perform the next day, the calmer you will be, the better you'll be able to make really huge decisions and split second decisions. Now, the thing is, is that you don't always want to have a really high HRV every single day. We think about this, uh, we think about exercise. We're always taught this with exercise. Go and exercise, push your body hard so that your body can adapt to stressors. And that is exactly right. You want to, it's, it's like that elastic that I described. You want to be able to pull that elastic as tight as possible without it breaking and it to be able to come back into shape. We think about this like riding a horse. If you were just to let the reins go, um, not do anything with your feet in the stirrups, just totally relax. The horse is gonna go all over the place in any direction, just not even know which end is up. It's not gonna be able to perform well. You need to have that balance between the tension of pulling the reins when you need and relaxing them, going a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. It's, it's the way that your feet are positioned as well. Um, all of this is going to help you to have the best ride that you can on that horse and to get that horse to perform at its best. And it's never about being completely relaxed. So if you have an HRV, if you want it to just always be high, that's never gonna happen because life also is always throwing you curveballs all of the time. Things are going to happen. You're gonna be running late. You're going to get into rush hour. You're going to have deals that are high pressured. You're going to have to make split split second decisions in your life. Your kids are going to have tantrums and scream. Um, your kids are going to wake you up in the middle of the night. <clears throat> There's always going to be things. I live in the city. You might end up being on a subway if you take transit that doesn't have air conditioning and is stifling hot or one that is freezing cold. Your body always needs to be able to adapt and so we want that high HRV, but we want to be able to have that ability to recover and adapt. So what we want as well, the key is how quick do you recover? So on the WHOOP, let me see if I have a picture of that here for you guys. Yes, you'll see this here on the WHOOP. I have a green 84% recovery and a red 22% recovery. That red 22% was probably when I was recovering from being sick. Um, because that's really super low. Um, we who also has a yellow, so it goes green, yellow, red. After a really hard workout, if you've done like a hit workout, cardio workout, or let's say you've really pushed hard in a project, and then maybe you celebrated a lot at night, um, that night of the of the post project. Uh, let's say being a first responder, pulling 12s, pulling 24 hour shifts with lots of calls, your recovery should be down. You should not have a high recovery rate from that. You would have pushed your body and taxed your body. So you should go on the whoop into a yellow or a red. If it's on the aura ring, uh, they have recoveries as well, um, like 80s, 90s, 70s, 60s. So you, you should go lower. The thing is, is where are you the day after? The day after, if you have had, like once your shifts are done as a first responder, once you've had that sleep or that recovery time, once the project is finished and you've able to recover, how fast did you recover? If you had a workout one day, were you in the red? Because we'll see this with people that are overtraining or people that have metabolic issues is where they're in the red every single day. They're not, not ever getting out of the red then that's telling us if their HRV is staying low on a regular basis, it's not able to recover. And that's where we need to start pulling out tools and, and, and getting you to where your HRV can recover. So how do we do that? How do we improve your HRV? Um, that is where the first thing that I do look at with people is their sleep quality, because that's like, one that everybody can improve on. And we start looking at sleep quality. That's, I'll be diving into uh, sleep as a, your second marker that is one of my, your, your HRV and your sleep are the top health markers that we look at when we are looking at, um, when I'm looking at 
the data from my clients to your, your, your best KPIs in order to get your best health results, to get the best return on investment for your focus, your energy, your drive, your performance, your health is your HRV and your sleep. So sleep is the, the next one that I work on. They kind of work hand in hand. But after that, we need to start figuring out where your stressors are. It could be that there is a food that is really bothering your gut right now because of something that's going on in your gut right now that taking it out will relieve your stress. We know that sugars increase your stress on your body. And there might be something in the office. There might be a toxic boss. There might be um, just the hours that you're working. It might even be an excited thing of a project that you're working on that's really, really exciting, but you're not bringing in the tools to be able to balance out how often you're living in that stress state because your stress state is kicks in for excitement as well as um, struggles that we're having. Um, our social events, social gathering, are you socializing or have you kind of like delved into your bubble um, during lockdown? This was huge. I know for introverts, I was very happy being in lockdown, whereas extroverts struggled with that. Um, there's all kinds of different stressors. Do you have family stressors, in-law stressors, supplements? There are certain supplements that you could be taking that actually could be stressing you out and um, that could actually be decreasing your HRV. The list goes on. There are so many different stressors. Uh, when I start diving into things with people, there could be traumas in your past. There could be traumas that have happened in um, your job. There could be have been a deal or a toxic relationship at work that has created certain traumas that has decreased your HRV. There's so many different things for us to look at. It could just be dehydration. It could be that you're breathing through your mouth instead of your nose. So it's really diving in and looking into these things, which is what we are diving into in this podcast. We'll be going through all kinds of the, the different stressors and triggers and different things that can be affecting your HRV. But the thing is, is we have to figure out what it is in you. Now, there's some that we may not be able to change right now. Um, you may be taking care of a sick child or a sick parent. There may be a financial stress that's happening that you're working your way out of, but until you work your way out of, we can't deal with that. So what we will do is work on the stressors that we can handle. And as I said, dehydration is an easy one. Um, working on sleep is one that we can continue with. There's certain things that we have to figure out what are the stressors that we should be working at first with you. Um, interestingly, with the Whoop Band, when we were diving into, um, uh, they started with a stress stress tolerance and a marker. And I have a, a group uh, on Whoop for my health KPI podcast. And somebody was saying that once the stress marker came in, they found that driving was their biggest stressor during the day. So that is the one that we would tackle. Okay, what is it? Was there a trauma? Was there an accident that happened? And now every time that you're driving in traffic or certain places, your stress goes up. Is it um, the temperature? Is it just that just habits are you just a nervous driver is it that you're just automatically switching to your mouth instead of your nose breathing when you're driving just trying to figure out what it is in order to help um to make sure that driving is the least stressful is it that you're always leaving late and just rushing everywhere that you're going like that is a way that we can start looking at this and solving it in order to start taking stressors out Another thing that I did mention as well in the last episode was working with um, a client where we were looking at their flight schedules and we found that them traveling red eyes home changed their HRV so much. It really made a difference in their HRV. And uh, we started adjusting their flight schedules, but by looking at their HRV to find out what was the best flight schedule for them in order to make sure that it stressed out their body the least. So they did have that focus, that ability to be calm with their kids, which was their biggest goal um, and present with their kids and be able to, to, to really problem think. So really understanding all of your stressors and looking into it. And it's such an individual basis that we have to figure out, okay, where are your stressors? And that's where I do sit and dive into like a two hour intake when I'm I'm working with somebody to really figure out you where are your stressors what is going on with your life so we can start figuring out how we can start increasing your HRV 
So that dives into the next thing of how to track your HRV. <clears throat> you hear me talk all the time about Whoop and Aura. I love Whoop and Aura. Um, they're my favorite. The reason is, is that all of their research and development is into the HRV is a big part of their research and development. And when we're diving into Apple and Fitbit and Garmin, uh, Apple itself is made for, Apple Watch is made for an entirely different purpose, um, that their R&D is, is not um, heavy on tracking that. Now, I did just learn that the new Apple Watch, I believe it's the four, I'm not sure, I'm not, sorry, but I, I don't have Apple, um, that the Apple Watch, the newest variation actually does have a health tracker on it that does track your HRV. Uh, if you have a model before that, I will put into the show notes, there is there are two apps that you'll wanna get, one to track this HRV and one to track sleep. Now, that being said as well, that the, the R&D, the research and development isn't heavy on these, but as I said, they're, they're even if they're not completely accurate, it's going to be consistent for you so that you'll see if what you're doing is actually increasing that marker as well. Uh, Fitbit and Garmin, they are more daytime trackers. They're not as much night trackers. That is starting to change and they are starting to bring that in since sleep is becoming more um, recognized as being a huge part in recovery and health for those that are very active. Um, many do have the daytime HRV. They don't all have sleep HRV. So that's something to look into as well with the Fitbit and Garmin. That being said, if any of yours has any, like check your tracker and see if it does have HRV. If it does amazing, just start looking at it. Start checking to see if you had a stress day, see where your HRV is the next morning. If you um, had what you felt was a relaxed day or recovery day, see if your HRV went up. If you're trying any new tools for um, stress management, see where your HRV, what happens to it? As you make any health changes, check to see if your HRV increases or decreases over the next like week or two. And you may find that what you're trying isn't really giving you a lot of bang for your buck. And it might be very time consuming or very expensive and not worth it for you. You may find that another one is giving you like amazing results in increasing your HRV and how you feel. and it may be worth, even if it is time consuming or does have a cost to it, it may be worth it. Or you may even find that it doesn't have as much of a cost or a time straight to it and gives you the same amount of um, relief in your HRV as something else that was the opposite. And that allows you to choose which one you actually want to continue with. So there's so much information that we can get with our HRV um that it is it is so vital it is really the primary kpi your it's it's that key performance indicator if you really want to make sure that your health is on track if you want to make sure that your uh performance your energy your drive is there that your ability to handle stressors to perform under pressure is there then knowing that your hrv is high is where you want to be. I know a lot of responders I work with when I start, they're in the 20s. I go down to the 20s. Well, actually, I know my son even. We've gone down to 12. Uh, his HRV went down to 12 when he had COVID. And he's usually like 100, 150, 120 is his normal HRV. Um, and he went down to 12. So like, I know for me, I was, I was like, 10, 12, 15, in the 20s, if I'm sick, I'm in the 20s. Whereas responders that I start working with often are in their 20s. So it's really, really important to know that because the higher that we can get your HRV, the, the more you have that tolerance and that bandwidth to stress and the less stress that is on your body, the better all of the health. Um, there's just lists and lists of health issues that come with um, 
when your body has more and more stress placed on it. So you're decreasing the risk to so many different health issues. All right. So next episode, as I said, we are going to be exploring another vital KPI that is going to be sleep. So we'll continue delving into this, like these essential KPIs, these key performance indicators that I do use with my clients. And this is how I excel everything that I do with them. This is how you can excel your ability to manage and tolerate stressors and improve all of your health that you are, are going in your day. And you're going to start gaining the tools that will control the stress in your life, enabling you to thrive in your career and in your home life. If you did like this podcast, please support us. If you found this episode valuable, please consider giving it a thumbs up, like it, share it with your friends and colleagues, and subscribe to this podcast. If you subscribe to it so that the downloads automatically come in, they do start showing us. It, it actually helps to reach more people and allows us to spread the knowledge and insights so that we can make more of a difference in other people's lives. If you are ready to work together with me, um, and if you're interested in taking that next step, then the first simple thing that we do is book a slot in my calendar. There is a link below in the show notes. During the session, we will have a conversation to determine if we are a good fit for each other. If, if I feel that I can help you, if I feel that um, you are somebody that is going to be putting in the work and putting in the steps, I can help you and teach you and guide you to a point, but it's you who has to put in the work. And if I feel that you're ready to be putting in the work and ready to take you on board, then we can discuss what that looks like in working with me. Thank you for being such a big part of this community. Your engagement and support does mean the world to me. Stay tuned for more valuable content that can empower you on your journey to success, resilience, and well-being. I will see you in the next episode.